Hello and welcome back to SUSACON 24. My name is Robert and I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Don Vosper. Don, welcome. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Now you have some exciting, we actually, we have some exciting news here at SUSACON around SUMA, or that's what we call it internally, but it is called SUSA, SUSA Manager, Manager yeah. right? And it has a milestone release this year. Big one. Big one. All right. So we've been it's, working on it for a while. Yes. A year now? Well, the last major release that we had was two years ago. Okay. The Manager 4.3. Okay. And this year, 5.0, so a new generation. So we jumped from 4.3 to 5.0? Yes, sir. That's a, a generational leap. leap. Yeah. Any breaking changes in this? Yeah. Nope. The, the biggest one is that now SUSE Manager is being delivered in a container. Now, some people might say that's blasphemous because it's a Linux management system running in a container, but you don't feel that way. Not at all, okay. actually. Well, it really is a shift in how the software is delivered. So instead of RPM packages on top of an OS, mm -hmm. it is from a container image. So it's a lot more controlled and separated distinctly from the underlying host operating system. So for upgrades, one of the bigger features now going from 4.3 to 5.0, it is it's not. It's going to be not in place. Not in place. Right. That's a, that's a big change. So you're going to have to create a, a spin up a new instance. Correct. And Which is a temporary, maybe a temporary burden to spin up a new instance in mm -hmm. the environment that you're in. So you have to have, obviously have adequate resources in order to migrate to the new one, mm -hmm. but the long the benefits are multiple. One, uh, if I have some disruption in that migration process, I have a very easy rollback because mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't taken it away. Sure. Right. The other one is just being able to have that new generation out there in a clean way. And that migration's pretty straightforward with a tool that we've tested already and, and built specifically for that. So let's unpack that a little bit. We have a, now a tool to assist with the migration because it's yes. not in place. There's a tool that helps like migrate Correct. the data over and does it help validate, you know, make sure everything's. Well, correct? there's two very s distinctly functional tools that we provided with SUSE manager five. One is MGR ADM, which is administration. And that one does installation, migration, upgrades, and all of that. And then MGRCTL, which is more the operational tool to day two perform operations using SUSE Manager. And in that MGR ADM, the migrate will migrate you from one server to the next. Mm -hmm. And subsequently, after you've gotten there, there's an MGR ADM upgrade will actually let you upgrade the SUSE manager packages themselves gotcha. on top of there. So, so along with that, we have also a new system list. Uh, I thought that feature was a really, interesting yes, because that was a, because in the community side, mm -hmm. you know, we heard a lot about how that was just a, a well, if a, you have hundreds or thousands of systems, mm -hmm. uh, viewing them in an aggregate way. Uh, took some time because it was having to dynamically generate that sure. list. And now it's indexed and already built for you, mm -hmm. sortable, searchable, a lot of extra nice uh, field searching tools that mm -hmm. are part of that system list. And for our biggest customers, that's really a, a boon. If you only have 20 systems, you may not notice as much. Correct. But when you have a hundred or 200 or 10,000, or in the, some cases more than that, uh, it's uh, very nice to have. Kind of, it reminds me of my wife complaining that her car doesn't go fast enough, quick enough when we're all in it. I'm like, well, oh, yeah. yeah, I go yeah. fully loaded. Like, what did you expect yeah. when you're by yourself? I mean, it's one server in the system versus a hundred, you know, this is, I, it, it's a, it's akin to that. That's how I, I saw that. Yes, exactly. And that upgrade was, mm. That's my wife's upgrade, and that's what I yeah. look at it. But it's a it's a good one. It's a big thing. It is uh, anything else in this release? Yeah, that's we've notable? done we've done a nice thing for the people who are running Red Hat and its derivatives. Ooh. Okay. So, uh, SUSE Liberty Linux is one of those. Rocky, Alma, mm -hmm. Oracle, 
where we align now what you see in SUSE Manager more closely with the native package management tool, DNF, that's a part of EL8 and nine based distributions. Okay. So it has a concept called modules and application streams. Mm -hmm. And previously in SUSE Manager, we essentially talked people through flattening that and getting rid of those dynamic streams. And now we actually can read that metadata and align it more directly with what's in the underlying operating system. So you guys made some changes to, uh, help better manage operating systems and not, not even our operating systems. No, no. Well, Liberty is one of Liberty. Our yes, yes, yes. We yes. have Liberty eight and nine that uses correct, app streams. Correct. So we wanted to be able to say. Well, and we've always said this with SUSE Manager that we manage multiple Linux systems mm -hmm. and we try to get as aligned with the native application package management stuff as we possibly can. So what you see in SUSE Manager aligns with what you might see if you were on the command line of that distribution. Sure. And this was a real gap because the DNF tool that was introduced with EL uh, reads metadata that SUSE Manager couldn't read. Ah. And now we can read it. Okay. So in the web UI, you actually see it uh, in, in a form that you can't even see with, the, with our competitors' tools. Yeah. Uh, so I can see, let's say, for example, if I'm using PostgreSQL, mm. And I have a certain version of PostgreSQL that's in the distribution. Well, in EL8 and 9, you can have multiples in there and you select only the one and the other one's not visible. Oh, wow. So I can choose PostgreSQL 13, for example, and I would not get prompted to upgrade to 14 because I'd selected 13 as my chosen version. Okay. And then previously in SUSE Manager, we didn't have a way for you to nicely view that, assign mm -hmm. that, reassign that, sort that out, and align with what I'm going to see from the command sure. line. Sure. So we talked about a few major milestones in this release. Anything else in there that's uh, that's solid that you'd want to pick up and mention? Well, one of the biggest things that when we talked about containerizing the server, mm -hmm. uh, there was... There was a question from customers, how does this really benefit me other than sort of future proofing because the world is moving toward containers mm -hmm. and we wanted, we didn't want SUSE manager to be left behind in that process because it still adds tremendous sense of value. It was almost an accidental discovery. Because we mount, yeah, yeah. So okay. I mean, storage for SUSE Manager when you're replicating a lot of content mm. can get bulky and big. And we had to really add it in three different places with SUSE Manager 4. And because it was so entangled with the underlying operating system, it ended up causing a lot of complicated setups for SUSE Manager. Okay. Now with SUSE Manager 5, it's much simpler. I, by default, have one place where my big storage is mounted. And SUSE Manager takes care of... Everything else. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and so what that can do is, now if I can move that, so if I want to replicate it, if I want to say, I want my SUSE Manager server on-premises now to have all its same content only in a public cloud environment, mm -hmm. I can actually move that into the public cloud spin it up and it's exactly the same. I don't have to start all over again, which is the way it was with SUSE Manager 4.3. Or if I have something catastrophic happen to my host OS mm -hmm. of SUSE Manager, I can spin up another one and attach that storage and be right back where I was. Uh, so that's a huge benefit to customers for the resilience side, for portability that we just couldn't offer before. Awesome. So as we wrap up here, where can someone learn more about SUSE Manager or what we call SUMA internally? Yeah. So a couple things, we're going to be having an updated landing page Ooh. for SUSE Manager 5. 
now that we're announcing the the release mm -hmm. and you'll be able to get started from there there's also some videos that we're working on that hopefully will you'll be able to link to very soon that give you s some direction on what the tool looks like see some feature demos and we have all the documentation for SUSE Manager 5 is already out there. Another, another cool thing that we're doing to simplify implementation is image-based installs. And once you get that image, it already has the container image, it already has the base OS. You just start, attach your storage and, and go. And go. Okay. So much faster to get started with SUSE Manager than ever before. And that's consistent across on-premises installations, hyperscaler installations in mm. the public cloud. For both server and proxy, those images will be available across architectures. So, and we're adding ARCH64. So if you're doing an ARM-based install, SUSE Manager, you can actually do that. Nice. For cool fun, I installed it on my Mac with Max Apple Silicon. And I have a SUSE manager running on that nice, too. Nice, pretty nice. cool, huh? It's very cool. It's very cool. Well, Don, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it, and check out the latest from SUSE Manager in the link below. Absolutely.